Hey there, royal watchers and drama enthusiasts. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. Alrighty now folks, buckle up and hold on to your fascinators because your favorite royal critic is back with some piping hot royal tea that's about to make your grandma's finest china look like sippy cups. Today we're diving headfirst into the latest saga of our favorite royal turned Hollywood one ape, Prince Harry. And let me tell you, this story is more cringe-worthy than your dad trying to dab at a wedding. So now Prince Harry, our ginger prince, decides to show up at the Concordia Annual Summit for the Diana Award. Sounds nice, right? A chance to honor his late mother's legacy, maybe say a few heartful words, shed a manly tear or two. But oh no, folks. Our boy Harry had other plans. Plans so bizarre they make his naked Vegas romp look like a tea party with the queen. Instead of giving a nice, safe, pre-written speech, you know, the kind Megan probably practices with him in the mirror every morning, Harry decides to go rogue. He grabs a mic and starts playing journalist faster than you can say Oprah interview. And let me tell you, it was about as smooth as a cactus in a balloon factory. Now, before we dive deeper into this royal mess, let's take a moment to appreciate the sheer audacity of it all. Here's a guy who spent his entire life having questions asked of him, and he suddenly decides, you know what? I'm going to flip the script. It's like watching a fish decide to become a bird, ambitious, sure, practical, about as much as using a chocolate teapot. Royal correspondent Cameron Walker, bless his heart, tried to be diplomatic about it. He called it weird and humiliating, which in British speak is basically the equivalent of saying, holy guacamole, what a train wreck. Walker pointed out that instead of addressing the crowd like a normal person, Harry was almost acting as a fool with a mic on stage. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of Prince Harry, fool with a mech isn't exactly the first thing that comes to mind. Although, after his recent string of public appearances, maybe it should be. It's like he's auditioning for a role in a royal version of Anne Chorman, but forgot to read the script, or any script, for that matter. But wait, it gets better. Our newly minted journalist Harry decided to tackle some hard-hitting topics. And by hard-hitting, I mean he managed to fumble through questions about mental health and climate change with all the grace of a bull in a china shop. It's like he was playing royal mad libs, just throwing out buzzwords and hoping they'd make sense. Let's take a moment to appreciate or cringe at some of Harry's pearls of wisdom. On mental health, he dropped this gem. Due to new technology, it doesn't affect every single one of us. The youngest are safe and the oldest are targeted. I'm sorry, what? Is this some new form of royal code I'm not aware of? Because last time I checked, sentences were supposed to, you know, make sense. It's like he's playing a game of confuse the commoners and winning by a landslide. I mean, are the youngest safe from technology or mental health issues? Are the oldest being targeted by iPhones or anxiety? It's a riddle wrapped in an enigma, served with a side of word salad, but our boy Harry wasn't done yet. Oh no, he was just warming up. He then suggested that we change the phrase mental health to mental fitness. Because apparently, the problem with mental health stigma isn't societal attitudes or lack of resources, it's the terminology. It's like suggesting we solve world hunger by renaming it Global Snack Time. Brilliant, Harry. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I can just picture Megan back in Montecito, watching this unfold on her solid gold TV. Because, you know, regular TVs are for peasants. She's probably alternating between face palming and frantically scribbling notes for their next coaching session. Note to self. Never let Harry improvise. Ever. Again. But here's the thing that really gets me. Harry's heart is probably in the right place. He wants to talk about important issues like mental health and climate change. Great. Awesome. But maybe, just maybe, he should stick to what he knows. You know, like, um, being a prince. Oh wait, he gave that up. Well, there's always, uh, playing polo, writing tell-all books, looking confused in California. The truth is, folks, Watching Harry try to be a journalist is like watching a giraffe try to limbo. It's awkward, it's painful, and you know it's not going to end well for anyone involved. But bless his heart, he's trying. He's like that kid in school who didn't prepare for the presentation, but thought he could wing it. Spoiler alert, he can't. And let's not forget, this is all happening during UN Climate Week in New York. You'd think Harry would have come prepared with some coherent thoughts on the matter. But no, instead we got a word jumble that would make even the most patient English teacher throw in the towel. But perhaps the most tragic part of all this is that it was supposed to be about the Diana Award. You know, the charity named after his late mother, Princess Diana. The woman known for her grace, her eloquence, her ability to connect with people. I hate to say it, but Harry's performance was about as far from Diana-like as you can get without actually being on another planet. It's like he took all the charisma and public speaking skills Diana was known for and left them in a drawer somewhere. 
probably the same drawer where he keeps his common sense and his ability to raid a room. Now, I can already hear the Harry defenders gearing up, but he's just trying to be authentic. They're crying. He's breaking away from stuffy royal traditions. And to that, I say, there's authentic, and then there's whatever this was. This wasn't breaking tradition. This was breaking basic communication skills. But let's give credit where credit is due. Harry did manage to achieve something remarkable here. He managed to make everyone in the room, including himself, uncomfortable simultaneously. That's a skill, folks. Not a useful one, mind you, but a skill nonetheless. And can we talk about the poor Diana Legacy Award winners for a second? These young people probably spent weeks, maybe months, preparing for this moment. They were probably expecting to share their achievements, their goals, their inspirations. Instead, they got whatever this was. It's like showing up to a job interview and having the interviewer ask you to explain quantum physics while juggling. You're not prepared, it's not relevant, and everyone leaves confused. But perhaps the most baffling part of all this is Harry's apparent belief that he can just switch roles at will. One day he's a prince, the next he's a Netflix producer, and now he's a journalist. It's like he's playing career roulette, but all the slots are labeled confusion. And let's not forget, this is the same guy who's been at war with the media for years. The same guy who's complained about invasive questions and tabloid headlines. And now he's asking the questions. It's like a vegetarian deciding to open a steakhouse. The cognitive of dissonance is strong with this one. But you know what? Maybe we're all missing the point here. Maybe this is Harry's way of showing us that he's more than just a prince, more than just Meghan's husband, more than just that guy who once dressed up as a Nazi for a costume party. Yikes, remember that. Maybe he's trying to show us all the different facets of his personality. Unfortunately, all those facets seem to be equally confused. Here's a wild thought. What if Harry just stuck to what he's good at? What if he realized that not everyone needs to be a jack of all trades, especially when you're a master of none? What if he understood that sometimes the best thing you can do is just show up, say a few nice words, and let the spotlight shine on the people who actually deserve it? I know, I know, it's a crazy concept. But a guy can dream, right? And let's not forget the sheer irony of it all. This is the same Harry who left the royal family because he wanted more privacy, less scrutiny. And now, he's voluntarily putting himself in the spotlight, asking for attention, and then fumbling it spectacularly. It's like watching someone dive into a pool and then complain about being wet. But maybe, just maybe, this is all part of some grand master plan. Maybe Harry's playing 4D chess while we're all stuck in checkers. Perhaps this is all building up to some grand reveal where Harry announces he's actually been a performance artist this whole time, and the last few years have been his magnum opus on the nature of fame and public perception. Nah, who am I kidding? This is just good old-fashioned foot-in-mouth syndrome, royal edition. Now I can already hear the Harry apologists warming up their typing fingers, but he's trying to make a difference. They'll argue. He's using his platform for good. And to that I say, intention is great, execution is everything. You can have all the good intentions in the world, but if you can't string together a coherent sentence, maybe public speaking isn't your fault. But here's the real tragedy in all of this. While Harry's busy playing journalist and mangling the English language, he's missing out on the opportunity to actually make a difference. He's got a platform. He's got resources. He's got a name that carries weight. He could be using all of that to spotlight real issues, to make actual change in the world. Instead, he's whatever this was. And let's not forget about the impact this must be having on the Diana Award itself. Imagine working tirelessly to honor the legacy of one of the most beloved figures in modern history, only to have it overshadowed by her son's impromptu and ill-advised foray into journalism. It's like preparing a gourmet meal only to have someone dump ketchup all over it. But perhaps the most baffling part of all this is the sheer lack of self-awareness. Does Harry really not see how this looks? Does he not understand that constantly trying to reinvent himself is only making him look more lost? It's like he's reading from a How to Alienate Everyone and Lose Public Sympathy handbook. And let's talk about those ghost children for a second. Harry mentions being the father of two, but these kids are seen less often than Bigfoot at a royal garden party. Are they real? Are they holograms? Are they just very, very good at hide and seek? The world may never know, but one thing's for sure, they're probably better public speakers than their dad at this point. But you know what? Maybe we should thank Harry. In a world that often feels like it's falling apart, he's providing us with some much-needed comic relief. It's like watching a real-life Mr. Bean sketch, complete with awkward silences, confused expressions, and an overwhelming sense of, oh no, what's he gonna do next? So, what's next in this royal comedy of errors? Will Harry try his hand at being a weather forecaster? 
Will he announce a new career as a professional mime? Will he write a self-help book titled How to Speak in Public Without Actually Saying Anything? At this point, nothing would surprise me. But here's a radical thought. What if, instead of constantly trying to be something he's not, Harry actually focused on doing something he's good at? What if he used his platform to spotlight real issues, to make actual change in the world? What if he stopped trying to be the star of every story and instead became a supporting character in the narrative of making the world a better place? I know, I know, it's a crazy concept. It's much easier to grab a mic and spout nonsense, to keep yourself in the headlines with bizarre behavior. But imagine the impact he could have if he channeled all this energy into something meaningful. Imagine if instead of confusing everyone with word salad, he was out there fighting for causes he believes in, coherently. But who am I king? That would require self-awareness, preparation, and a willingness to step back and let others shine. And if there's one thing we've learned about Prince Harry, it's that he'd rather be the lead in a drama than a supporting character in a success story. So, my dear viewers, as we wrap up this royal roller coaster of a story, let's raise a toast to Prince Harry for providing us with endless entertainment and reminding us that no matter how bad our public speaking skills are, at least we're not confusing an entire room on an international stage. To the Diana Award recipients for somehow managing to maintain their composure in the face of this linguistic onslaught. And to all of us for having the patience to try and decipher whatever it is Harry was trying to say. Because let's face it, folks, in a world that sometimes feels like it's falling apart at the seams, there's something oddly comforting about being able to lose ourselves in the trials and tribulations of someone who seems determined to redefine the concept of public speaking. So, until next time, my royal watchers, keep your wits sharp and your dictionaries handy. This is your friendly neighborhood royal critic signing off. Stay sassy, stay classy, and remember, in the Game of Thrones, you either win or you end up confusing everyone with nonsensical statements about technology and mental fitness. Peace out.